Hello, I'm Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano. We received so many great questions during my web address on cybersecurity last week, I wanted to sit down and answer some more of them. So Linda from New York asks, how can we get the average person to realize how important computer security really is? That's exactly what we're trying to address during Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Uh, as Linda's question implies, cybersecurity is a shared responsibility. And I have responsibilities as the DHS secretary, uh, which I talked about in, in my web address last week. But you and I both have responsibilities as individuals as well. We can all practice good cyber hygiene and protect ourselves and our families at home, work, and school. You, your colleagues, and your families can follow a few simple steps to keep yourself safe online. Install and activate firewalls for your computer and internet connection. Make sure your antivirus and anti-spyware software is installed and up to date. Practice good online habits by not visiting suspect sites, downloading suspicious documents or attachments, or opening email from people you don't know. And back up your files regularly and always use strong and secure passwords. You can visit dhs.gov slash cyber for even more specific security tips on everything from social media to online shopping. Let's see, Derek in Texas asks, what type of research opportunities do you see available in the cybersecurity sector? This is something I discussed with cyber companies in Silicon Valley earlier this month. Uh, simply put, as cyber threats evolve, our capacity to counter and preempt these threats must evolve as well. So there are going to be a lot of research opportunities. We do cyber R&D in-house, but the overwhelming majority happens in academia and the private sector, and we work to support those efforts. Um, for our part, we are looking for research to help us address our core cyber missions, which are detecting and ultimately uh, one day preventing uh, malicious code from entering federal networks, and working with the private sector to protect against attacks and emerging threats to our country's critical infrastructures, like the electric grid. Jim in Nevada asks, will you press for additional DHS grant funds for cybersecurity? Uh, right now, there are no specific DHS cybersecurity grant programs. But as I talked about last week, cyber is part of just about everything we do. So many of our existing grant programs, which total more than $3 billion, allow for cybersecurity spending as part of broader security measures. Of course, um, moving forward on this and a range of topics and making the best use of grant funding will be at the forefront of our minds as we move forward. Deborah in Kansas asks, what measures are in place to protect individual usernames and passwords when they're issued in public places? This again comes down to shared responsibility. There isn't a federal regulation against making your password ABC123. Think for a moment about what a password gives access to, your online bank account, for example. So some simple measures can make a big difference. Don't use passwords that are based on your personal information, like your birth date, phone number, or social security number. Those can be easily accessed or guessed. Uh, use both lowercase and capital letters, as well as a combination of letters, numbers, and special characters. And use different passwords on different systems. You can find additional tips on choosing, as well as protecting, strong passwords at dhs.gov cyber. See, Christopher in Washington State asks, how is DHS planning to assist in handling the increasing amount of digital evidence? Within DHS, both the Secret Service and Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, have an important role in fighting cybercrime. So we're very familiar with this topic. Just last year, the Secret Service led a federal investigation that uncovered the theft and sale of more than 40 million credit and debit card numbers from numerous U.S. retailers. It led to one of the largest hacking and identity theft cases prosecuted to date in this country. On this and other cases, the Secret Service works closely with the Department of Justice and the FBI to investigate and prosecute cybercrime. In addition, 
ISIS Cybercrime Center, known as C3, provides expert cyber technical and investigative services in support of ICE investigations into intellectual property theft and child predators online. C3 also trains federal, state, local, and international law enforcement agencies in cybercrime and houses a state-of-the-art computer forensic laboratory that specializes in digital evidence recovery. I visited C3 this month and saw it in action. Uh, just as we do in going after criminals offline, we're using both partnerships and our in-house expertise to ensure that we are able to maximize our use of digital evidence. April in Seattle asks, how can computer security professionals get involved in volunteering to help with mitigation and education? DHS's partner on Cybersecurity Awareness Month, the National Cybersecurity Alliance, NCSA, works to promote cybersecurity ethics and safety. The NCSA recently launched its Cybersecurity Awareness Volunteer Education Project, known as CSAVE. CSAVE encourages security professionals to coordinate with local schools to educate young people on safe cyber practices. These opportunities also expose students to the exciting career opportunities in cybersecurity, including, I might add, coming to work for DHS. You can learn more about CSAVE at staysafeonline.org. Let me say that again, staysafeonline.org. James in Texas asks, what can corporate security leaders do to assist DHS in fighting the cybercrime battle? Thank you for that question, because we are actively engaging the business community in our cybersecurity efforts. As I mentioned before, I was just out in Silicon Valley earlier this month. These ongoing relationships, as well as more formal sector coordinating councils for industries like information technology and communications, help us align our efforts between the private sector and the government. So I'd encourage companies in the 18 critical infrastructure sectors to get involved and reach out to these councils. More broadly, companies can also help develop and strengthen an internal corporate culture dedicated to cybersecurity. And part of this culture includes a continued investment in innovation and technology development and recognizing the importance of implementing security from the start rather than trying to tack it on later. Uh, finally, we received a number of questions from our DHS partners at state and local agencies across the country. One of them, Tracy in South Carolina, asks, What is the Department of Homeland Security's plan to enlist more highly trained and experienced professionals in cybersecurity? We are aggressively hiring in this area. Indeed, if you go to dhs.gov cyber, we have already posted 150 positions in the cyber arena. DHS is committed to recruiting the best to serve our country. We recently sought and received new authority to hire up to 1,000 cybersecurity professionals across the department over the next three years. This is a great opportunity for public service in an arena where the nation needs the best minds. We are looking for the finest computer scientists and engineers, mathematicians, and innovative thinkers. If you're interested in pursuing public service while working in the cyber realm, we want to hear from you. Again, the jobs are posted at dhs.gov cyber. Take a look and keep looking. Thank you for your questions. We're going to continue doing these web chats. I think they're a great way to exchange information and stay connected. I look forward to our continued work together to secure our nation's cyber infrastructure.